In the latter months of 2024, LEGO Star Wars would release a set that we have seen a few times, but it feels like this time they really perfected it with the 75396 Desert Skiff and Sarlacc Pit. Now, with 558 pieces and five minifigures, as well as one exclusive minifigure, this set is not cheap in the slightest, coming in at almost $100 Canadian and around $90 American. Now, at the start of this video, I won't talk too much about the price, but at the end, when I tell you if you should buy it or not, I do want to touch on that price point a little more. Now, price point aside, the box art on this thing looks amazing. You have the Desert Skiff, obviously, above the Sarlacc Pit, in the dune sands of Tatooine with the two suns behind it, as well as the characters in a lot of different areas of the set. The only character that isn't shown in the box art, or at least not with the other characters, is the Nine Nub figure, and that's because it's the 25th anniversary figure. The side of the box art just gives us a, another look at the Nine Nub Midi figure, as well as more box art of this 25 years of LEGO Star Wars that they've been doing with all the sets that contain a 25th anniversary fig, which looks amazing. The back of the box art looks amazing as well, with the minifigures in some different poses, as well as showing off some of the play features and Lando falling out of the skiff and Boba getting eaten up by the Sarlacc pit. The set gives us a beautiful cast of minifigs with our 25th anniversary minifigure, only one true antagonist minifigure, but a really nice cast of rebel figures. Starting off with the Boba Fett minifigure, the first thing I want to talk about is how this is the same one from the Boba Fett mech last year, and something you will notice if you are a big nerd like me, is the armor is not 100% accurate to the scene that this Boba Fett is from. Now, this doesn't bug me too, too much, as it isn't 100% noticeable, and I don't think the figure end up, ends up looking too, too bad. However, something I do wish they included was his kind of cloth piece that goes over his shoulder, that kind of cape. That would have been really nice, but aside from that, this is a beautiful figure with some amazing printing, the arm printing, just like the one in the Boba Fett mech, is insanely good on this minifigure. And under the helmet, while it is a beautiful face print, it is the same one that we saw in the Boba Fett mech as well. A couple of pretty common minifigs next up here are the Han Solo and Chewbacca, especially that Chewbacca. He comes in a lot of sets. The Han, however, Han Solo is pretty common, but this one is new to the set with some new torso prints and face prints as well as a nice hairpiece and no leg printing, but I think it kind of works for the fig. They both come with some handcuff pieces, and I think this is the first time in a while I haven't seen a Chewbacca or Han come with any sort of blaster. And Han does come with a second face. This is what it looks like, a much more sleepy, kind of disoriented look, which I actually really like how this face print looks. Next up, we have the Lando minifigure. Now, this one is also new. Mainly, the one you'll notice the most is the leg printing and the face print is where at least I found it most notable. The leg print looks just amazing. The torso print looks great as well, but it is pretty similar to the old one, as well as that helmet mold is pretty similar to the old one, but that doesn't make it bad. The old helmet mold was already perfect, so this is just great. Now, for face prints, he comes with one that's pretty happy and optimistic. And one that looks like he's a little more intrigued or confused by something. The Luke is the next regular minifigure in this set, the next and last regular minifigure in the set, and he comes with his green lightsaber, as well as some really nice printing. I don't know why the black and gray just really works for me. Also, that hairpiece is the same from the Throne Room Duel that came out last year, the diorama. And he has this face print on the front, which is a pretty... I'd say happy look. His second face print looks a little more serious and stern, but honestly, both the face prints are kind of lackluster to me. Now, the final minifig in this set, and my favorite by far, is the Nine Nub minifigure. This thing looks amazing. The helmet mold, or I guess not helmet, but the head mold is beautiful. The eyes are just so well done. Everything about this figure is just amazing to me. I still can't believe it's real. It feels like, it feels so perfect that it doesn't feel real. That's how much I like this minifigure. Now, aside from the amazing head mold, he has some great torso prints as well as leg prints. I do think the torso doesn't really lead into the legs well, but honestly, I don't think it's supposed to. It's just like, it's so hard not to love this minifigure. 
and some pretty basic printing on the back, but a better look at the back of the head for an amazing mold and an amazing figure. I know a lot of LEGO Star Wars fans are getting pretty tired of the original trilogy and how many sets they're putting out of them, but honestly, a minifig lineup like this is always going to have a place in my heart. I mean, six amazing figures and they're all just like really fun. This cast of characters is great and I just love the figure selection. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 for the figures. I know some people are going to say the Boba Fett isn't that great or the Luke. I really like it, you guys. It looks great. Now, the set comes with two builds, the Sarlacc and the Desert Skiff. And obviously these are both great, but I think we're gonna start by taking a look at the Sarlacc itself. This is probably the biggest and most detailed Sarlacc we have ever gotten in LEGO Star Wars, and it looks really, really good. When I first saw the pictures just online and the box art, I didn't really think much of it, but having it in person, this thing is beautiful. The greebling, the sand around it, and then just even the inside and the black on the bottom to make it look like it goes deeper. It is all really, really beautiful and looks amazing. Now the Sarlacc obviously has the head as well as four tentacles that are movable and I will show you how to do that in a bit, but I did wanna talk about the look a little more. If you look inside, it has some really nice greebling to show that it's kind of going into the Sarlacc as well as some teeth on the side with some red kind of almost fleshy pieces to make it really, really disgusting in there. I just love how this thing looks. It's so freaky and it's so cool to have it on display. Now as for playability, the way to move these tentacles on the back here is you just flip these, oh sorry, you just flip these back and forth and you can kind of have it as the Sarlacc moving around now. You would obviously for the most part want it turned like this when you do it so you can't see the handles but I just wanted to show you guys those really quick. Now, another cool thing you can do with the Sarlacc here is in the middle, you obviously see the mouth, which you can open, and you can fit a minifigure inside. We're going to put Boba Fett, and it might be a little tough here, sorry about that, but you can actually, let me just see this, sorry about this, you can close a minifig inside. Now, the antenna is going to stick out a bit, you can see there on the Boba Fett, but any other minifig and the Sarlacc can fully eat it. Now, another cool thing you can do with the Sarlacc is two of the tentacles come with just these kind of pointed pieces at the end. The other two have studs on it. So you can almost make it look like the Sarlacc is grabbing a minifigure and about to put it in its mouth, which is super awesome. Now, one complaint I have about the Sarlacc pit itself is I wish that the mouth was a little deeper in. It just feels a little too exposed, and that's my really only gripe with the build. This desert skiff is absolutely stunning with some amazing building techniques as well as a lot of really nice tiling in the center of the build as well as outside of it. This thing ends up looking amazing. Some of my favorite parts usage here because there are actually quite a few is this kind of Ninjago hat on the sails, the kind of handles and steering guy, which I think this is the first time, maybe, maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. But this is the first time, at least, that the control panel has looked at this good on the Desert Skiff, as well as the inside of it. The flooring on this thing looks amazing. Two other points I really like are the kind of back work here behind the control panel. That looks really nice. The tiling and some snot techniques actually end up looking really good, as well as the thrusts on this thing. This also looks amazing. Like, this is such a well-designed model. Not only is it sturdy, really well to play with, but it's also really beautiful. Not only is the build really sturdy and very, very beautiful, it has quite a few play features on it. Flipping it around, you see this little circular piece right here, and when you push on it, you will see on the other side that this really nice uh, plank that you can walk a figure off of sticks out. And if you're wondering, this is what it looks like when it has minifigs on it. I think this is easily the best way they've ever done it. I know in previous models, they'd have it come out from under or it'd be a part of the build itself. This one, it sticks in the build really nice and it doesn't cause any disturbances in the look of it, as well as it's just very easy to maneuver and play with. Another small but fun play feature that doesn't take away from the look of this model at all is that you can swing this out. Maybe you have a minifigure crash into it and 
it can be a, it can end up being really fun for kids. You can have it fall into there and then someone falls into the Sarlacc pit. It's just a super fun model with a lot of playability packed into such a relatively small build. It's smaller than I thought it would be, which is not a negative thing. It's just, I thought it was going to be a little bigger, but honestly, that's not a knock against it. Also, I heard a lot of people say that it feels like this sail barge or my bad, not sail barge, but desert skiff gets pretty congested after you put a few minifigs on, but I actually think it holds up pretty well. I have five minifigures on there and it still feels like you could fit two more and it'd still look relatively nice and maybe even one more on the plank to walk someone off of. So I actually do disagree with that point that a lot of people may say, and I think it actually looks really nice. Now, even though I've been saying the praises of this set, I do think it is something you should wait on before buying. $100 for this is just not worth it. This is a $60 set at most, and honestly, I think the way LEGO could have fixed this is include two Desert Skiffs. If you're going to price it $100 already, you might as well make it accurate to the scene where you see two Desert Skiffs. One more Desert Skiff I feel, still think would pretty be pretty hard to sell me on for 100 bucks for this plus another Desert Skiff. But I think it would have made it a lot more sense. It would have made a lot more sense to the set. It would have been more accurate to the set. And it's supposed to go along the Java Sail Barge UCS set, which if you have two Desert Skiffs and a Sarlacc Pit, it's perfectly accurate to the scene. But 100 bucks for this alone is just not something I'd waste money on. I'd wait for a sale. If it was, if you take away the price point right now and it's a $60, $70 set, it's a nine out of 10 to me. But right now, just for that price point, I'd wait until it goes on sale. Anyway, guys, see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed.